Black Financial Channel. That's theblackfinancialchannel.com. Uh, if you want daily financial news and commentary from a black perspective, make sure you subscribe to theblackfinancialchannel.com. So uh, I wanted to cover uh, some things uh, that I saw in the news today uh, related to the economy. There's a lot happening right now. A lot of things kind of moving uh, the needle. Uh, the biggest thing that was really interesting was that one of the big challenges that you have with restarting the economy after the pandemic and after the stimuluses and the expansion of unemployment is you're finding that a lot of people do not want to go back to work. There are lots of people, millions of people who have left their jobs and said, you know what, uh, you can take this job and shove it. I don't want to go back to it. Um, and uh, so what they said here is that the Fed's beige book um, said economic activity declined across much of the country, falling sharply in most regions. Amid mass unemployment, workers were reluctant to go back to their jobs. They cited safety concerns, uh, meaning that if I go back to work, I might catch the virus, which is a real thing, right? It's a real issue. Uh, workers uh, also mentioned child care issues. Uh, you know, where who's going to keep my kids? The daycares are shut now, so uh, you don't have anywhere to leave your children. Uh, and then there's the generous unemployment benefits the government has provided. $600 a week, that's a big number. A lot of people didn't make $600 a week when they were working every day. So, uh, you know, if I'm getting $600 a week to stay home, why would I want to go to work just to get $400 a week? Uh, and, uh, and, and so anyway, they said business leaders were also pessimistic about the potential pace of the recovery. Um, unemployment, uh, the unemployment rate through April uh, hit a post-World War II record high of 14.7% and 20.5 million layoffs during the month. Workers are reluctant to head back to their jobs for a number of reasons, the central bank noted in its Beige book. The report also cited a generally downbeat outlook from business contacts regarding hopes of a recovery. Business leaders cited challenges bringing employees back to work, including workers' health concerns, limited access to health care, excuse me, uh, excuse me, child care, and generous unemployment uh, insurance benefits. Nearly 40 million people have submitted unemployment claims since the coronavirus was declared a pandemic in mid-March, and more than 25 million have been receiving benefits for at least two weeks, according to the Labor Department. Uh, moving on, moving on, moving on. The Fed report noted that the PPP, quote, helped many businesses to limit or avoid layoffs, although employment continued to fall sharply in retail and in leisure and hospitality sectors. Banks have been strong, uh, have seen a strong demand for the loans. <sighs> you know, one of the interesting things about you know, the way this um, recovery went about, and, I, and I'm not going to get into a judgment call on whether or not people want to go back to work. Let me just tell you this, you know, when I saw that we were suddenly living in a world where everybody was going to get to work from home, I, I part of me was a little bit, you know, sad because I thought I, I thought I had a little secret that nobody else knew about. I, I realized, I said, okay, now the rest of the world is going to find out something that I figured out 20 years ago, which is that working from home is pretty cool. That, you know, being at home with your family is better than being in an office with a bunch of people that you don't even like. You know, uh, it was a bunch of racist people, you know, and so so I've always loved working from home. I've always worked at home. Um, and so I can't blame anybody who has experienced the joy of, of working from home uh, who doesn't want to go back to work because I, I decided I didn't want to go back to work 20 years ago. Right. So I, I decided that a long time ago. So th in fact, this whole century, I have not worked outside of my house. Now, with that said, though, um, I, I think that, you know, you've got some real legitimate issues in terms of sort of, you know, understanding that what this whole situation did was it caused people to stop for a minute and it snapped them out of their, you know, pre-existing condition. Uh, their pre-existing condition was this sort of state of hypnosis that you were pulled into in this economy that's really built on a type of capitalist slavery, uh, if, if you want to call it that. I mean, that's maybe a harsh term, but, but that's how I see it in the sense that um, if you think about health, you know, hospitality workers, uh, workers in restaurants, things like that, these people have been underpaid for a very long time. Uh, we should have done more in terms of minimum wage, uh, in terms of, you know, making sure that jobs were protected, in terms of making sure that workers' incomes rose along with billionaires and millionaires and CEOs. Uh, because what's really going on right now is um, the pandemic itself which wasn't really a bad pandemic. Remember, they predicted 2 million deaths. They got about 100,000. So they got so 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 really what you thought would be a tidal wave and a tsunami 
was just basically a little ripple in the water, right? But but they try to convince you that it was a tsunami, but it wasn't a tsunami. It just wasn't. The numbers aren't there. You had what really amounts to a bad flu season, and you don't shut down the economy because you had a bad flu season, right? So so what what the, so so this is but we we're, we're beyond sort of debating the merits of the pandemic and what happened. But what I'm really saying is that what happens is that remember Rahm Emanuel, Obama's buddy in Chicago, once said that you never let a good crisis go to waste. And so when the politicians realized we were in crisis mode, all the politicians started uh, pursuing their agenda. So Trump's agenda is, I'm going to make this like it's a war. We're in wartime. So now I can you know, issue these executive orders. I can get all this support to do all these things I want to do. Um, you know, and, and, and that while the lights are out, we're going to go make all our moves. And, and in the name of safety and security, we're going to get all this power. The Chinese had an agenda. The Chinese said, oh, this is our chance to go after Taiwan. So they're ramming ships, Taiwanese ships in the ocean to, to go and make moves on Taiwan. Oh, this is our chance to control Hong Kong because Hong Kong was out of control a year ago. If you remember with the big protests, that ain't happening no more because you can't gather a million people in the streets when everybody has to stay six feet apart from each other and everybody's afraid of each other. Right. Um, you know, uh, they, they, so they're making their moves. They're making their global economic power moves. Uh, the Democratic Party is making their their move toward a more socialist economy. Um, I don't know if they're hardcore socialists. Some of them are. Some of them are. They're they're open about it. Um, I'm not a hardcore socialist, but I'm not a hardcore capitalist. But what I really see is you know this push for um, you know the, the, this this world where anybody can get an income from the government uh, just by being alive, just by breathing, and you know and and I think that's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, I think the problem, though, is that the government has already been gutted by the rich. Back during the Reagan era, uh, Reagan created when he got shot by John Hinckley Jr. and he survived that shooting. That was one of the worst things to ever happen to America was, was that Reagan survived because once he survived, Congress was giving him whatever he wanted. And what they did was they again, crisis means opportunity. Remember, right? Never waste a good crisis. So in the midst of this crisis, they took the opportunity to say, let's push through this legislation that's going to significantly reduce corporate tax rates, reduce the tax rates on millionaires and billionaires and allow them to raid the government to get resources, to get bailouts, things like that, and to pay less taxes than everybody else and to create a more global economy. And every president after that kind of supported that. Clinton kind of pushed it forward. Obama pushed it forward, uh, you know, because your government's run by the corporations is run by the billionaires. So now you've got a government that's sitting here financially crippled. The, the government, in my opinion, does not have the ability to um, to take care of everybody <clears throat> when they're just sitting at home not working. I, I don't know how that's going to work. You know, I, I, sure, they could keep printing, printing money, but that's not going to work forever. So I, I, I think that, you know, this whole idea of, of having trouble getting people to go to work, I think it's pretty funny. Um, I personally can't blame any hospitality where I, I knew a lady that worked at Hilton and she went to work every day. She was really articulate, really smart, wore a nice outfit every day to work. And I found out she was making like $13 an hour. And I said, my God, I like, you have a dignified job, but you don't get a dignified salary. So I do think that we need, uh, we do need a little bit of that socialism. The problem is that America tends to operate in extremes and, and that's where you know, things start getting real stupid. Right. So uh, so uh, so that's what's going on. Other big issues happening right now. Donald Trump is um, in a war with the social media platforms. Twitter started a war with the president of the United States. That is not going to work out for Twitter. Uh, Trump has already signed an executive order. Uh, let me see. What's what's this executive order that uh, let's see. He, he attacks Trump attacks Twitter employee while defending fact check tweets on with mail in ballots. OK, so Trump is attacking Twitter employees now. But, yeah, he wrote he wrote an executive order. Um, uh, he said he planned to sign an executive order that will push the Federal Communications Commission to set new rules on some websites protections under Section 230 of the Communications Decency Act. The law, as it stands, largely exempts those platforms from being held liable for much of the content on their websites. So that's going to be messy because now, so, you know, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube and Instagram can be sued for the content that appears on their platform. They don't they they don't want that kind of smoke. And and, and I'll tell you what, um, Mark Zuckerberg uh, is is politically smart because 
he basically said, you know, that uh, social media outlets shouldn't be doing that, that we shouldn't be fact checking the president. And I think I don't think he was saying it because he likes Trump. I think he was saying it because he doesn't he doesn't want that smoke. So uh, I think that this is going to be interesting to see how this plays out. Uh, also, the Dow, if you want to know what's going on with the stock market, uh, the Dow did really well today, went up 200 and something points. And then it, it, all of it went away because Donald Trump put out a tweet and he announced some sort of press conference on China very soon. So it looks like he's going to war with China too. And uh, now that, so now that the pandemic is over, watch, watch this, watch this. And I've been telling you guys this for the longest. Some of y'all don't want to listen, but I hope now, now, now you hear me though. Do you hear me though? Let me know if you hear me though. Uh, I told you a month ago that what's going to happen is that this pandemic thing is going to sweep out out of the news cycle because it's not it wasn't the crazy killer that everybody talked about. And now all the numbers are going to kind of dwindle off. It's going to drip lower and lower in the headlines and you're going to start talking about something else. And it's going to be almost as if the pandemic never happened. I guarantee it. Now you've got big countries with over a billion people talking about we had no new coronavirus cases this year. No new people caught coronavirus this year. Really? You got one. 1.2 billion people in your country in a highly contagious virus that was out of control a month ago and now you didn't get one single person to catch the virus you're a liar you're lying they're lying to you india has been lying since the beginning india has anybody seen just how unsanitary india is in general India, no disrespect to Indians. If you're Indian, I'm sorry, I love you, but your country, y'all got some nasty stuff happening in India. They got lakes and rivers where the, 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 the Environmental Protection Agency says that, you know, the acceptable level of toxins in a, in a lake is this high. This river is that high, right? Like, like seriously, and, you, and you're going to tell me India doesn't have any coronavirus cases. Now, I understand maybe their immune systems are stronger because they're dealing with all that stuff. But come on, man, give me a break. So, so here's what's going on. This is what's happening. All the countries are lying. Trump is lying to you. Um, the Republicans are lying to you. The, in Georgia and Florida, when they tell you that there are no new cases and uh, the economy should be open, they're right. The economy should be open. But when they say that there aren't any new cases or there wasn't a spike, that's them fudging the numbers because politicians lie. The Democrats were lying to you from the beginning because they were counting everything in within a hundred mile radius as coronavirus. If your grandma died of a, you know, if she bled to death after being shot in the toe, if she had a friend who had Corona, they were going to put coronavirus on the death certificate because they were looking to scrap up as many numbers as they could to support their agenda. Everybody's got an agenda. Democrats have an agenda. Republicans have an agenda. China has an agenda. Everybody's an agenda. So I ask you this question right now. What is your agenda? What is your agenda? What is your agenda? The millionaires and billionaires that I know that did well during this pandemic, I know millionaires who, who are multimillionaires now and weren't multimillionaires before it began. They they had an agenda. What is your agenda? If you if, if if sitting at home and being afraid or reacting to whatever the news tells you or following your favorite politician is your agenda, then I hate to tell you this, but you're probably gonna be screwed. You're probably gonna get left behind. You know, um, I don't, I, I try to shape my agenda based on information facts. I talked to several doctors, frontline medical doctors. I looked at the data. I watched, I watched the news very closely. I remember I told you I was paying attention when all the celebrities were announcing that they had the, the, the Corona thing. I said, okay, if all these celebrities have it and all these politicians are all 70, 80 years old and they're all heavily exposed because they're all shaking hands and breathing people's air, then we should have a bunch of dead politicians, right? That, that, I mean, based on what they're saying, right? Because they're telling you, they convinced you that if you go to the grocery store, you might die, right? Well, if I could die going to the grocery store, then I know that a politician who shakes 300 hands a day, who's 75 years old, he's definitely got to be at risk. So show me some dead politicians and then maybe I'll believe you. And at the end of the day, tell me, give me yes or no, yes or no. Can you name one A-list celebrity? One. I mean, remember, remember, these people were all exposed. They were all shaking tons of hands, meeting people, signing autographs. Can you name one A-list, A-list celebrity, a Samuel L. Jackson, uh, a Tom Cruise, a Brad Pitt who died from this virus? Can you name one single politician, one Democrat, Republican, member of Congress, member of the Senate, which one died from Corona? Give me one. Give me one. Yes or no? Yes or no? So everybody who's sitting here afraid, you're afraid of your imagination. 
What you're fearing is something that doesn't exist. You're fearing that they, all they have to hold on to is, well, just wait, just wait. It's going to happen this summer. We're going to have dead people this summer. It's going to happen. No, it's not. It's not going to happen. People are going to die because people die anyway. 7,000 people die every day in the United States just because it's a Tuesday, right? So so when they point out 80,000 people dying, understand, 80,000 is a big number. Sure, it's sad. That's what we get in a, you know, a typical flu season. We might get 40,000 deaths. I don't know if y'all know this, but lots of people die in nursing homes from the flu every single year. I don't know if y'all know tens of thousands of people, right? But, 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 but 80,000, while it's a big number, that is not 2 million. They were predicting 2 million. So you tell me, I will bet you every nickel in my bank account that they will not have 2 million American deaths from this virus anytime in the next decade. I guarantee it. So what you have to understand is this. Here's what here's what the deal is. This is why I've always said the economy has to remain open because people need their jobs. 38 million people unemployed is not going to work well for you. A lot of death is going to happen from that. 600 doctors wrote a letter to the president asking him to open the economy because they said thousands of people are dying now because you shut down the entire economy and they can't even go to the doctor to get their medication. People need surgeries or they're going to die and they can't even get the surgeries because they're afraid to go to the hospital because they're all scared of catching the virus, right? So people are dying from drug overdoses because they're sitting at home and they can't go to work anymore. So they're just o- overdosing on opioids. People are dying because they're committing suicide because of the isolation of being locked in their house forever, right? So so, re- so remember, you're talking about death either way. So the question is, which option is going to give you the least death, right? And, 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 and here was the ultimate issue. The reason that it was okay and the reason I agreed to that, that it was fine to shut down the economy is because in the beginning, they predicted 2 million people were going to die, right? 2 million. They predicted 2 million. They, they got 100,000. So even if the second wave is three times bigger than the first wave, you're still not talking about a number that will overwhelm the healthcare system. The healthcare system will not be overwhelmed. There is an entire hospital that they spent $20 million on in Brooklyn that is completely empty. Now, New York is supposed to be overwhelmed. New York is in a state of panic. Well, then why is there a corona hospital in New York that is completely empty and unused that costs $20 million? Tell me if that makes any sense. Tell me if that makes any sense. Right. So 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 everybody who's sort of like like hey, rejecting this message, you're only rejecting it because you, you've been fed something that just simply is not true. That is that cannot be proven. Um, you know, even if you go look at the data right now, go look at the statistics, you'll find that all this stuff is trying, kind of dwindling off. I believe that you're always though in danger. I believe even when they tell you that Corona has gone, don't you believe them for one second? It's still out there. It is still out there. What they've concluded is that the numbers are not big enough now for them to shut down the entire economy. And what they're going to start doing is distracting you because they need you right now. They need you to feel safe again. They trained you on how to be fear and fearful. They train you like monkeys. They teach you how to be scared. They spend a lot of time hypnotizing you into fear. Now they have to hypnotize you back into confidence because confidence leads to consumer spending. Confidence leads to a strong economy. It leads to a massive investment. And that's what they're going to hypnotize you into now. And the way they're going to do that is they're going to report numbers that are not that 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 are not accurate. They're either way they're gonna lie to you. So I'm just telling you, based on what I'm seeing, um, I'm gonna do my own research and uh and I don't think that shutting down the economy, even if there's a second wave, would make any sense at all, unless the second wave is over a million people. If it gets over a million, then you might get to the point where the medical system is overwhelmed and you can shut it down. But until then you can run an economy, still tell people to protect themselves, still do all the necessary precautions, and you're gonna be fine. But if you wanna know what I do, I don't wear masks. Um, I'm down in Florida with my family. We are living our lives. I'm not going to sit still and wait for something to happen that isn't going to occur. All right. So so that that's my two cents. Um, as far as people not wanting to go to work, I don't even judge that. I say whatever works for you uh, works for you. If you are happy with the unemployment uh, scenario, then congratulations. I would encourage you to uh, really study how to do business online because that's really where the opportunities are. Um, I think that doing business in person is going to be real sticky for a little while and you want to find different ways in in order to make money. Um, So do me a favor, hit the thumbs up button, hit the thumbs up button, share and subscribe button. Also, don't forget the Black Stock Market Challenge starts on June 1st. Um, I want everybody on this platform to be invested in the Stock Market Challenge. So if you're not invested in the Stock Market Challenge, 
um, then uh, then uh, go to uh, if you haven't started, it's totally free. You can go to theblackstockmarketchallenge.com. That's theblackstockmarketchallenge.com. So uh, Bob Jones says, I hope this dumb nigga catch corona. Well, you, you're stupid. You probably are. You already got the virus of stupidity. So stupid people have to leave my channel, Bob. So you are out of here, you big dumb idiot. So so go and uh, what you ain't got corona, but you probably got something else that's even worse than corona. So. Uh, we, we don't we don't allow ignorant people on this platform. All right, guys. So uh, I'm out of here. Have a good day and love you. And uh, I will I will see you soon. So take care. Bye bye. Peace. Here we are, clan the isms, cataclysm great. Our people out here struggling, trying to make it in the state. Everybody out here doing it, but we the ones who late. Now family, we the ones who gotta delegate. Get that money in the power, never be fake. Stick the code side for three. What did he say? Uh, create jobs, support our own. Educate the same and pop back your home. Got three degrees, triple ten. Three PhDs that we on the CNN. DBTV, let's talk about negligence Ignorance is bliss, but we can turn it to intelligence Believe none of what you hear, half of what you see Let's break it down here, I'm Dr. Boyce TV